my first night sleeping there in the tent, I heard these crazy sounds. It's like, oh, oh, and in, the next day I was like, hey, um, what the fuck was that last night? <laughs> and they said, oh, that was a hyena. A hyena came to camp. Have you seen a hyena in person? No. They're yeah, they're like big, ripped, nasty, gnarly beasts. And I've I've seen them because I did uh, in Tanzania. I also went on um, safari, and I just you wouldn't want to be face to face with one. They look disgusting and brutal and intense and strong and brutish. Yeah. And the dogs will chase them away, but you can see also the dogs have scars from from hyenas, from uh, from baboons, from the different animals there that Whoa. they come in contact with. Whew. What's funny, you know, they, it's just a, a, such a different way of life. I remember when I first moved to Korea and I came back to little Minnesota and my friend's mom was like, uh, hey, Bill, my real name's Bill, don't tell anyone. Hey, hey, Bill, do you find when you go around the world that, you know, we're just a lot more alike than we are different and we're all just kind of the same? And I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> no. <laughs> And of course, there's uh, we have similarities as humans, but that's what I like about visiting these different people is just seeing what's so different about them. And so my guide there, who wasn't Hidzabe, he said, hey, you, sh you should ask them, what do they do if somebody dies in the tribe? What do they do? It's, it's a dark thing. He knows it's going to be a dark answer. And so I ask, and they go, yeah, just like throw their body on the cliff or something. Wow. Just like throw Leave them them. to the side. I'm like, all right, farewell. Wow. Yeah different way of life what do they do if there's an injury so my my guess is that they ha they they know which medicines to use um what about bro naturally broken bones or anything like that Did yeah i didn't think to ask but i'm not sure i mean these people are in this really difficult terrain and they're chasing after animals i gotta imagine there's some injuries yeah they look very athletic though they look like these people are in great shape oh yeah no i was I was dying. I had my my Apple Watch on to track my steps. <laughs> my heart rate's like through, charge it out through there? the roof. Uh, we yeah, we had brought batteries and stuff out there. Mm -hmm. um, and th these guys are—they're not breaking the sweat. They're not breathing heavy. They just know the land. They know how to move. Right. They know um, they know how to walk. And so when they talk about baboon, that's the that's the big thing. That's the number one thing that they like. And yes. they talk about it because of the taste. I, I think it's about the taste. So. So that's one of the crazier things that I got to see this year. Was, Didn't you want to try baboon? Since I did want to try it, and yeah. I would have tried it, and um, but but they didn't get it, and I can't really influence what they're doing. We that went, might be the only primate that I would be interested in eating because it seems like it's partly a primate and partly a dog. Like hyenas are weird, or excuse me, uh, baboons are weird. Yeah, they got crazy teeth. Yeah, like fangs. Yeah, yeah, and so they either hang out in the bao bao trees or in these cliffs where there's a lot of little like the kind of places they can hide. Um, and so we scouted the area and we saw like baboon shit there. And so like uh, they were, again, we were hoping they would go back that night, but they didn't. Mm, so the baboons must be aware also that they're being hunted by the people. That's something they also have to be careful for because they said if they overhunt, then the baboons will move their camp completely. So mm. they can't, they are aware of that and they won't take too much. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Wow. So was that like the most intense, intensely foreign, I guess probably the best word, experience that you've had, like eating? Maybe. Although it's, it's still not the worst food I've ever had. I've had worse than that. What's the worst? The worst? Well, it doesn't sound that remarkable, but stingray liver is disgusting. Mm, where'd you have that? In Vietnam. They have a, there's a place in Vietnam on the coast called Vum Tau. So I, I live in Ho Chi Minh City or Saigon. And two hours from there, you can go to this coastal city and you can get Stingray. And we were doing, oh, this is like mid-pandemic. I was so lucky during the pandemic that we had about a, a year where uh, there, there was no, like when everything was going to crap here in the USA, we had like a whole year where no one was even wearing masks because they locked it down early and uh, it didn't spread, fortunately. And so during that time, I didn't stop shooting. I, mean, I have no reason to stop shooting. We, we can still move around. Um, and so we did a whole series just about eating different animal organs. Okay, today we're going to eat four different types of animal hearts, and then eventually four different types of animal livers. And one of the livers was the stingray liver. It is, it's kind of like the bile. It's just like, it, it has a minerality of the ocean. Like you, yeah. There it is. Oh, you're so good with the clips. Jamie's the best. And it is so bile and bitter and, uh. That dude looks very pleased though. 
Yeah. <laughs> he looks like, oh, we got the good stuff. And so this is something that's prized by them? I wouldn't say this is even commonly eaten in Vietnam. It's just... What the fuck is that thing? Oh, that was a... Whoa. Yeah, monkfish. I'll try it. <sighs> Look at that thing. Back now, up a little bit. So in contrast, it. the monkfish is famous for its liver. They have one of the best livers in the world, and it tastes like foie gras. It's a foie gras of the sea. Really? Yes, it's incredible. And that's something that I tried in Japan. And so this is the stingray liver. And how are they preparing the stingray liver? Um... They put it in a hot pot, and uh, and then whatever this is. I think maybe they braised it or boiled it for a while. Yeah, that, that dude was... you're eating with, he doesn't even look excited. <laughs> so that's my buddy, Calvin. And uh, he seemed to like it a lot more than I did. I could say that. And so what's it with that? Capers? What is that with it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so what does it taste like? Or is it caper? Or maybe it's pepper. I don't know. I can't tell from here. Um, and so it's just mushy and bile and... Yeah, it's squishy in a way where you can feel like, am I eating pieces of the ocean floor right now? I uh, I just really didn't enjoy it. Um, and I didn't feel bad. You know, usually I might feel bad, but it's like this is not the chef's fault. This has nothing to do with the cooking, the style, the country, or the culture. This is uh, I just don't like that body part of that animal. And, and is this on the menu there normally, or did you yes. have to... Per yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a Stingray restaurant. Stingray's delicious, and you wouldn't think so. Uh, oh, I've had Stingray before. Oh, you have? Yeah, I had it in an Italian restaurant before. Skate. It's basically the same thing, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very good. Very interesting fish. 